Hello world, Noah here. Welcome to episode three of Java to Kotlin. In this episode, we're going to be talking about null in Kotlin. In the last episode, I ended with this little piece of code, um, which has some rather strange behavior. Behavior actually makes a lot, a lot of sense, but if you're coming from Java, you'll find it to be strange. Because if I wrote the equivalent code um, in in uh, Kotlin it would, or in Java, it would look like this: string person and then person equals null. And this is of course perfectly valid in Java, because in Java, string is an object type, and object types are allowed to be null. So this person variable is an object variable, therefore it's allowed to be null. But here I have person, which is a string. String is still an object type, but yet I can't make it null. And the error that it says is it says that string is a non-null type. Kotlin is very specific about null safety. This is really important because in Java, as I said, any object variable is allowed to be null at any time. So you either have to assume that an object variable is not null and risk getting a null pointer exception, or you have to do a check using an if statement, which clutters up your code. But in Kotlin, things are a lot nicer. Because when I declare a type person and I make it a string, I'm stating that person is not allowed to be null, and I can be 100% confident, beyond a shadow of a doubt, that person will never have a value of null. Because as you can see, when I try to set it equal to null, it gives me an error, and if I tried to actually run uh, this code, it wouldn't even compile. It just won't compile, won't run, none of that. Because it's not allowed to be null. But null does, of course, still exist in uh, in Java, or in Kotlin, rather. Um, so how are we allowed to use it, or how do we change our code to be able to use it? Well, what we do is we need to make person an optional uh, value. We need to say that person is allowed to be null. And the way we do this is we mark its type as nullable with the question mark. So person is a nullable string or an optional string, which basically means that person could either be a string value or it could be null. And you'll see that at this point, our error goes away because person's allowed to be null. So that question mark is basically a warning that if you're going to use the variable, that it might possibly be null, and you better make sure that it isn't. And then what you'll find is that if you try to actually use the person, so for example, let's say I want to try to print out the length of the person, I actually get an error here. And again, if I tried to run it, it wouldn't even compile. Because I'm making an assumption here that person is a, is a, has a value, and I'm getting the length of that value, but I said that person might not have a value. And Kotlin is going to be very picky, and it's not going to allow me to assume, it's going to force me to check. Now, uh, to demonstrate this example, I'm going to go ahead and create a function called greet. And greet is going to take a person, and it's going to print out a nice message, hello, person. This is that string interpolation from the last episode. This is the equivalent of just writing hello and then plus person like that. Um, but this looks a lot nicer in my opinion. So I'm going to write it like that. So basically what that will do is, um, is it will say hello and then the value of person. And this parameter for here is a string, which means that I can be 100% confident that the parameter passed to this greet method will or function will not be null. And in fact, if I try to call greet and I pass my person variable, it's going to give a type mismatch because person is an optional string or a nullable string and greet requires that there definitely be a value. It requires a string that can't be null. So that's going to uh, give me an error. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow the greet method to uh, take a null value. I'm going to make the person be a nullable string here. And so I'm going to have greet basically handle uh, the issue, handle the, handle the case that the value might be null. So now I can actually call greet with person, um, which is good because um, you know, that's what I would expect. And just to sort of simplify this, I'm going to call greet with null, and I'm going to call greet with an actual value, and I'm going to give Noah there. I'm just not going to use this person variable. Um, okay, so if I try to run this, 
and it'll be pretty simple. It'll say, hello, null, and then it'll say, hello, Noah. And this is the exact same thing that would happen if I tried to run this uh, in Java. It's just, uh, you know, saying the person, and uh, if person's null, then it's going to be null, and that's good. Now, what you'll notice um, is, let's say that I want to say, I want to say, hello, person. I'm going to change this. I'm going to say, hello, person, uh, comma, you have... And I want to know how many letters they have. Person dot length letters. I'm going to say your name has some letters like that. But you'll notice that this is going to give me an error. And this is the exact same error from before. I'm assuming that person is a value by calling length on it. But I said that person could possibly be null. And so there's a chance that it actually won't have a value. Now, the first way that you could resolve this is with an if statement, which is exactly what you would do in Java. So I could say if person, oops, if person is not equal to null, and if person is not equal to null, then I want to print this out. And I could put an else statement that will, you know, say there's no one there or whatever I want to do. But you'll notice that the error goes away, and person here gets highlighted in green, and it says smart cast to kotlin.string. Because basically, kotlin is smart enough to understand that this if statement assures that person will not be null, and so any code that runs inside of this if statement can assume that person is not null. So person outside of this if statement could possibly be null, but after I check to make sure that it can't be null, I'm allowed to treat it like a regular string instead of a nullable string. And Kotlin calls this a smart cast. So I can now call length on it because I know that if person is null, this code won't even be allowed to run. And if I run this, it'll give me the expected output. When I call greet with null, it's just not going to do anything. Um, when I call it with Noah, it's gonna say, hello Noah, your name has four letters, which is what we would expect. But of course, there are some nicer ways, or I'll just say some different ways to do it in Kotlin. It's up to you if you think it's nicer. I personally think there are better ways to do this. Um, some people might just prefer the if statements, but I'm going to show you some other ways to do it. Now, you'll notice again that the error comes back. And so in order to get rid of this error, there's a couple of things that you can do. The first thing you could do is you could put two exclamation points. This is basically you asserting that you're certain that person won't be null. Because here you're marking person as a nullable value. Um, but if you come to some point where you're sure or you're pretty sure that person is not going to be null and you want to basically treat it like it can't be null, you can do the two exclamation points like that. And what will happen is that if you call it with a null value, then you'll get a null pointer exception. Or actually a Kotlin null pointer exception, but same idea. The only way that you could possibly get a null pointer exception in Kotlin is if you call, is if you do this. You basically have a value that's nullable and you put two exclamation points to force it. And Kotlin is very specific that you have to explicitly do this. You have to go out of your way in order to be able to possibly get a null pointer exception. Not just one exclamation point, but two. So Kotlin is very clearly trying to say um, that you probably shouldn't do this unless you're you know, absolutely sure or you're just not doing something well. But this is force calling the exclamation, exclamation, dot. So you're force calling length, and you're risking getting a null pointer exception. Um, but in general, you don't want to do this. Um, and if you use any of these other methods, you'll never have to worry about getting a null pointer exception. A better way to do this is with an optional call, which is question mark dot. And basically what will happen is since person is a nullable value or an optional value, if it's not null, then the call will go through, so it'll call dot length. But if person is null, then it will just give you the value of null back instead. So if I run this, it's going to say, hello, null, your name has null letters. So of course, the first time I'm just printing out the value, and the same as in Java, if I print out null, it's just going to say the word null. But here, I'm basically saying um, that if person has a value, in the case of Noah it does, I want to call dot length on it. So it's going to say four letters because it's calling length. But if value is null, so if person is null, then instead of calling dot length, which would give an error, this whole expression is just going to evaluate to be null. 
So it says, hello, null, your name has null letters. Uh, we could make this look a little bit nicer by using what's called the Elvis operator in uh, Kotlin. And so to do this, you write a question mark and a colon, and then you write a value. Now it's called the Elvis operator because if you look at it sideways, you turn your head to the left 90 degrees. Um, it sort of looks like, you know, the colon is his eyes and the question mark is his weird hair. It's kind of a weird name, um, but that's what it's officially called, the Elvis operator. Um, but basically what happens is the Elvis operator says that if the value on the left is not null, then it will evaluate to the value on the left. But if the value on the left is null, then it will evaluate to the value on the right. So this is like a compact ternary operator in regular Java. So what will happen in this case when I run this is it will say your name has no letters when the value is null. So basically, when person is null, this optional call won't happen, and this value right here, person question mark dot length, will be null. Then the Elvis operator will say, since this value on the left is null, I'm going to give you the value on the right, which is no. And that's why it says no letters. Now, when I do have a value, like in the example of Noah, this optional call to length will work, and in this case, it's going to give me the value of 4. And the Elvis operator is going to say, since the value on the left is not null, I'm going to give you the value on the left. So that's why it says your name has four letters. There are other ways there's uh, to deal with null, and there's one way in specific that we're going to talk about later on when we talk about inline functions, which are a pretty cool feature of Kotlin. But for now, there are a couple of different ways to um, deal with null values, an essential overview of how null works in Kotlin. The uh, result of this is that Kotlin is going to be a lot safer of a language. You'll never have to worry about null pointer exceptions, and your code will sort of give you a better hint um, that if you, you, know, you see a function that returns a non-nullable value, like a regular old string, you know that you're going to get a value back. And if you come into a point where a value is nullable when it has a question mark like this, then you know that you have to be extra careful um, when you're dealing with it. And Kotlin, in fact, forces you to be extra careful. Uh, and you can't just directly deal with it unless you override. So that's all for this video. As always, subscribe if you want to see more. Comment with what you want to learn. And if you like this video, click the like button. Continue on through the series. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye for now.